you've accomplished all your goals? Are you? <sighs> yes. Let's make this about me. Um, <laughs> uh, no. Well, yes and no. I mean, I. It is funny. You probably, it sounds to me that you and I are similar in a lot of ways when you talked about being like a workaholic. Mm -hmm. You're probably a bit of a perfectionist too. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so the double-edged sword with that is um, that you work really hard at making things like kind of perfect and you work Mm -hmm. really hard to be, to achieve a certain thing. But when you achieve that certain thing, it's like not enough, is it? It's not. You always, you're like, oh, there could be something more. That's like the double-edged sword. It's like, you work really hard to get somewhere, but then when you get there, it's like it's not good enough and you almost don't enjoy that thing because you're looking to the next thing. Well, you know what it is, actually? It's that that it's relief that you're getting because you're so anxious for it. And then you're like, am I actually going to get to it? And then when you finally do, it's actually relief. It's not actually like I accomplished something. Mm-hmm. So that's where, you know, it gets a little bit tricky. Like they say when athletes are playing that it's they don't feel that like, oh, this is so great. It's They feel this huge relief because they've been trying to get there and then they finally do and I think that's the same with goals at least I feel like that but I kind of started this year to celebrate my accomplishments Mm -hmm. even if I don't necessarily feel like it Mm -hmm. because I was just uh, like getting my goals done and then I'm like oh whatever and then you know yeah it was just because if you don't enjoy it then like what are we doing yeah why did I even do it yeah exactly gotta celebrate it yeah. I mean, I, I do definitely take moments where I sit back and I reflect on like the things I've accomplished. Mm-hmm. And I think about how I would have felt about those things if I imagined myself in the place I am now, like five years ago, 10 yeah. years ago. I would have been so stoked. Right. And now I'm in that place. I'm like, why do I not feel the way I thought I would feel when I looked at that goal five years ago? Life like, just moves so fast, too. It does. So you almost don't even have time. It's like people are like, okay, what next can we do? You know, yeah. and what? Uh, you know, yeah. I just bought this house, but now let me try to ch- get a bigger one. And, yeah. you know, yeah, just never pleased. Yeah. I think I think that's why you got to stay off of social media, too. I think it has a lot to do with. Yes. With. Maybe feeling like you didn't succeed. Yeah, there was definitely like a time when I would scroll through Instagram and I would see all of these other people getting like these accolades and winning these awards that I wasn't winning. And I was like, why are not, am I not that? Did person? you really feel affected by that? Yeah. Really? For sure. Like, I remember seeing, you know, people like went, like directors winning awards and stuff like that, and like that I had never gotten. And I was like, why? And, but then I would step back and be like, wait a minute. Like, I am directing, I'm producing good yes. material, I think. Like, so what? I didn't win an Avian Award. But I, I also like have a podcast. I also am doing this. I'm doing mm-hmm. like 10 other things that and this person have- is actually not doing yeah. as well. They're just doing the one thing. I'm doing like five things. So like, why can I not be like, oh, wow, you're actually doing pretty well with the five things that you're doing, you know? And honestly, your reputation has always been good. You don't have a reputation of someone that keeps people on set for 20 hours. And you know what I mean? But that. Oh, yes, those, I do know exactly those, what you mean. It, you know, those people really pay attention to that. They really do. Yeah. I mean, I know that I did. I was like, I don't want to be on any of these sets no. regardless of awards or whatever. Yeah. And that's the you thing. Know. I don't see. <laughs> I think that that is maybe what separates me from a lot of other directors, except for Mike Quasar, because he feels me on this and he does much better than I do on this. Is I don't want to be on set all day either. No, what? I don't want to be on set for twenty hours. No. I want to go home. I think people are really surprised. They're going to be sur- surprised to hear that because I remember one time I got to set at two p.m. I didn't leave until eight in the morning and that was like for browsers or something like that it wasn't even for like you know like the wicked ones where they yeah. do these special effects it was just a standard scene and I was like livid I was like don't ever have me like we're not I'm not here to hang out yeah at all is that what it felt like just you know how it is just like things could be so sl- yeah people want to hang out I yeah. feel like I want to get in the makeup chair no. go straight into pictures go straight to dialogue scene be done go yeah. home yeah um and I also don't feel like people really pay attention to the scenes, or not the scenes, the the dialogue and whatever. So I felt like very against mm-hmm. spending ten hours on that. Yeah, because the scene alone itself is what an hour. Max. I know, I know. That's what, and it takes so much longer to do the dialogue than everything else. I, I don't think exactly. people don't realize it how long it truly takes. It really does. Yeah, I think about um, you know, and I always tried so hard to run an efficient set and. You know, when I was doing those big wicked features, oh, you I would. Did them? Oh yeah. Oh my gosh. I did a few. The, my longest day was eighteen hours. Yeah, see. And I, I, 
I look back on it now and like, look, I'm grateful that I did those movies. It was a good experience for me. It was a really mm-hmm. good learning experience. I got to write them. Like Steve Ornstein gave me quite a bit of freedom. Um, <laughs> didn't give me the best budget, but it's okay. Right. Um, <laughs> that was just why that day took so long, but it's yeah, fine. Yeah, yeah. Um, but so I'm grateful for those experiences. But I, I just think now, and I think about like how long I spent doing it, how many hours, and how like little I was paid, and I Crazy. don't have any residuals. I don't own the content in any way, and I'm just like. It's crazy. Why? Why did I slave away to produce these I movies mean, and not have like any? I don't know. I just that's like, where OnlyFans has really saved yeah. the industry. And I know it's probably you know I've been out of the loop, but I know it's from what it seemed like on Twitter. They seem very the industry seems a little bit frustrated trying to get girls on set. Yeah, but it, you make triple sometimes more the amount in yeah. a day and you're you, you're sitting at home yeah. you know not i know going to set you actually lose money at this point being on set yeah that's like, a true statement you yeah. girls are losing money yeah so either they're going because they want to you know put their name out there or they want to actually like, hang you know, out they want to be some of or, those or people they, that love yeah. being on set and there are people that love being on set love being in productions and i mm-hmm. and i get that and that like obviously very that's, creative and that's a positive thing and I always felt because I know a lot of producers complained about it but I kind of liked the shift that like OnlyFans brought because I only want to work with people who also want to be on set too Absolutely. I don't really want to work with people who don't want to be there no, and now no those days of, you don't have to be there if you don't want to and I think that's better for everybody yeah I remember days where it was like the energy could just you know if someone doesn't want to be there it brings down the whole energy of the room yeah yeah I always, I always had a good time on set. Even though some of the days were long, I really had a good time mm-hmm. filming. Even though I kind of didn't want to be there, I still, you know, I still actually genuinely had yeah a good time. Yeah, I, I do. Don't... Yeah, I think about those long days and like <laughs> they ended I, up being fun. And I way. had fun. <laughs> yeah. Like some of my best memories are from those days. Yeah. And, you know, it also helps to. I think in in porn specifically, because I know a lot of people that work in mainstream, they don't have the same crew all the time. Mm. They always work with different people. So you don't really get to build that camaraderie like you do in porn. Yeah. Like in porn, like directors, like we work with the same people all the time. Everyone's friends. Have, and so we're like friends. Yeah. So it's I think that helps a lot. Hey guys, if you want to support my show, then you should think about joining my Patreon. At my Patreon, I offer all kinds of amazing perks in exchange for your financial support. From live streams of my interviews as they are happening, to bonus Q&As, behind the scenes photos and videos of my shoots, plus cool merch like stickers, mugs, and hoodies, we have you covered. So go to patreon.com slash hollyrandallunfiltered, and while you're at it, make sure that you click that subscribe button so you don't miss a single one of my new updates.